Well, for us players and the staff and all the rest of it, it's been like a, a normal day in a normal training session. And, uh, you know, last week we were all delighted to be taking part in step one and, of course, making sure that everything worked. And I have to say the players physically have come back in, in good shape, which is which was vitally important. Um, so yesterday, today was a bit like normality. Um, this afternoon we'll know more, of course, of when we're looking to start, and I think that's vitally important, is that the players and the staff have a have a start date because when you're training and preparing, the one thing we're all looking for is that is that date. So hopefully there's a bit of good news this afternoon, and uh, we get we get we get that we get that uh, date, which is vitally important. To be honest, everyone's been chomping at the bit to get back. I think you, you you spend three or four days not playing football, and then you you're twiddling your thumbs and you're looking at your phone all the time to see if there's been a date when we can go back and stuff. And it, it felt like forever that we're off. Um, luckily, everyone's kept in pretty good shape. Everyone's came back um, really fit, and um, it's been brilliant. But now I think we can sort of focus on the the good part and, and look forward to preparing for games and, and hopefully. Oh, I think, like I said before, everyone's uh, desperate for the games to come back around. I think that's why in training um, the, the level and the tempo has been so good because everyone's looking for a, for a place in the team. Welcome to Storm Gain Question Time, where I'm joined by five of the Newcastle United first team players. We've got Alan St Maximin, who of course is the flying winger signed in the summer. We've got Matty Longstaff. We've got the captain, the spokesperson for the club, Jamal Lascelles. We've got Swiss international defender, Fabian Schaar. And we've got Carl Darlow, the goalkeeper who arrived alongside Jamal Lascelles a few years ago at the club and is one of the key figures here at Newcastle United. Guys, thanks very much for giving us uh, your time today. Um, plenty to get through, guys, with you. We're going to start with the captain, uh, Jamal. I think building a partnership with your other defenders, I think the more you play with each other and the more you train with each other and, and the goalie as well, the, the bigger understanding you'll get and knowing what that person's going to do. And just the more you do it, the, the easier it will be on the pitch. So. Um, and obviously, you know, listening to the manager, listening to the tactics and whatever, whatever he decides to go for. And, you know, sometimes you can look at the opposition as well. If it's strikers that like to run in behind, maybe drop off a little bit. If it's maybe a bigger strike, you can get tight and be more aggressive. So uh, there's a lot of things that come into it. But I think for a, for a young player, the main thing is probably just listening and learning. And you make mistakes, it's lear learning from the mistakes and uh, just, just remain positive. Since I was a kid, it's the dream, you know. You yeah, but um, my career was a little bit different. So when I was younger, I wasn't pre prepared like to being a football player because, um, yeah, um, with 15 or 16, I was like working in a bank, doing normal stuff. So nobody was expecting that. So uh, now it's a great honor for me to have the possibility to, to be here, and I'm really proud of it. Bitcoin. Um, I know a few of the boys at other clubs, and uh, I know they were getting into it, investing some of their money into. I notice. I always wonder about how much you uh, really what it is. To be honest. It's really important for me because the supporters give me a lot, you know, when you have like 50,000 50, people cry your name or 
says some things to you, some things good. It's really nice and you, you want to give everything for, for the supporter. That's why for me, I'm normal people, you know, nothing changed. Yeah, I'll probably keep it and see, try and keep it for the next 10 years and see if it goes up. Clever lad, clever lad. It's because he's from Newcastle. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge honour to be captain. Um, you know, I would say it's every kid's dream, but you wouldn't even dream of being a captain at such a big club. So, you know, over the moon to still be here and be captain. Um, you know, in terms of getting the boys going, uh, to be fair, we've got a good group. Everyone's always ready for the for the game, for the battle. Um, and it's about what you do during the week. We work really hard during the, during the week in training, and uh, so. When it comes game day, we're all raring to go and um, you know we're all ready. So. Um, I don't think you really put it into words. I think as a as a young boy growing up, you, you dream of it, um, and then I think when it happens, it was kind of all just a big blur. I think obviously at Newcastle you need to be working hard, um, that's, a, that's a given I think obviously for the fans, they like to see the players uh, giving their all on the pitch and for any young player that's coming through, a bit like Matty did to be fair, came through and showed what he's about, uh, ability on the ball and then um, obviously he's worked, he's worked his socks off every time he's played for the club, um, that's the main thing really. It's difficult to say about this, like something happened in seconds and um, I hit the ball, the ball very well, so obviously it was a good strike, but um, yeah. There's only one thing being talked about more than that game, and that's your moustache. Uh, what's the story behind it? Um, yeah, that's coming from a bit of stick, actually. Um, it was. It started out that we there was a few of us got together. There was about eight of us, and we said, right, we were having a go at each other, saying, oh, can you grow a beard? Can you go? And then one thing led to another, and before I knew it, I'd agreed to grow a tash until we um, un until it w well, it was meant to be the sky photos, but that's been and passed um, and then they said no we did say it was till we got our first win so um, you know it, it could be here for, for a while longer you know if we don't get off to a good start but hopefully it'll be off quite soon but I'm hopeful I'll get rid of it um, because I know how ridiculous it is but um, it's caught them a bit a bit of flack from all quarters I mean it's a little bit of a novelty and um, I've read people saying it's ridiculous and that kind of thing and I mean my missus is, is one of them so um, I mean it only strengthens me to sort of keep it on a little bit longer and I mean there's a few knocking about I mean Ryan Taylor had one and he shaved it off um, Alan Smith's got one and there's a few of the staff meant to have them but didn't quite have the uh, the cojones to sort of back it up but um, yeah it's good banter and the lads are buzzing off it I mean Andy Carroll has got one but it's uh, it, it, it's reminiscent of a uh, of a of a twelve year old in the uh, onset of, of uh, the hormone development, um, so hopefully he, he can uh, he can grow a tash shortly. It'd be, it'd be nice if he if he's able to do that. Hello everyone. This is Steve Banyard alongside David Pleach. Welcome to the Barclays Premier League for Newcastle United against Aston Villa and for this great and proud club today marking a new beginning Chris Waddle was indeed here but, uh, Monday at Old Trafford showing them just what they've been missing and it's the first home game back in the big time it's a curious coincidence that today's opponents and the team against whom they bowed out of the top flight just 15 months ago in May last year, signalling a turning point in Newcastle United's evolution. A match that was settled by a Damien Duff own goal that uh, condemned the tune to relegation. 
Everton season just the second time they failed to play in the Premier League. Certainly a reality check for some. But back at the very first attempt after a championship winning season under Chris Hewton. The stadium here potentially to be full to the brim. It holds 52,000. And the weather conditions are absolutely perfect here. Brilliant start too for Aston Villa last week, the turbulent run-up with Martin O'Neill's resignation, the protracted saga of James Milner's move. Kevin McDonald keeping the players focused here. A really fine win for them against West Ham. An encouraging start in difficult circumstances. One of the biggest grounds in England, staging top flight football again. Expectations no longer as grand as the stadium, but after promotion as the championship champions, well, they're once again ready to take on the best in the land. Certainly a great feeling for the team to be back. But the uh, simple truth for Newcastle is they no longer have the financial muscle they had previously known here. Kevin McDonald there for a moment. Uh, the draw at Rapid Vienna in their Europa League playoff on Thursday. A big boost for them too. Sixth they've been in the last three seasons. And we're all fascinated to see who Randy Lerner will pick to take the club forward. Here's Kevin McDonald shaking the hand of Colin Calderwood. Newcastle United. A famous black and white stripes. Remember, this was a club that qualified for the Champions League two years in a row and that was just seven years ago if we take a look at the team news today James Perch making his home debut in what is an unchanged lineup from Monday there's been so much talk about overseas imports and new squad rules so worth highlighting perhaps that eight of this starting 11 are English on the bench Robin Kratz returning to the squad after injury new signing Sol Campbell Dan Gosling still working their way to full fitness setting up today as they did against Man U with Nolan the captain playing just off the lone central striker the previous man to wear the Newcastle number nine over Femi Martins but it's Andy Carroll who has it now Only a Newcastle legend who's worn the iconic shirt but the responsibility the 21 year old is only too keen to take Stephen Ireland is Aston Villa's new number nine. He makes his debut today as Villa revert to a more familiar lineup after all the changes in Austria on Thursday. Agbonne Lahore sidelined with a slight hamstring injury. John Carew OK. Watch out for a couple of 20 year olds. Kieran Clark, Mark Brighton, who started the season so well against West Ham. And Brighton down the wing, Clark in the centre of defence. And Ireland slotting straight in for Villa in the centre of midfield. It's his 24th birthday today. A direct replacement for Milner. Ireland arriving in part exchange for Milner, who of course came here for big money just six years ago. Chris Hewton very well indeed. What are the expectations for Newcastle this season? Well, I think Chris's expectations might be slightly different to the uh, many supporters, the fanatical Newcastle supporters, who will want them to do exceedingly well. Chris is a realist, he's very sensible, and he will know in his heart and his head that if they survive this year and give some good performances, he will be more than happy. Aston Villa, curiously, with... Uh, Kevin McDonald in temporary charge at the moment. Do you see him getting the job full time? Well, there's always a possibility. He's worked solidly there for 15 seasons now. He's respected by the players as a coach. They know him quite well. They know the thorough work he's done underneath the first team. And I know that when Martin O'Neill and his colleagues, uh, McDonough, the goalkeeper coach, uh, Walford, the coach, uh, John Robertson, the assistant manager, and Ian Story Moore, the chief scout, when they all left, they uh, gave great credit to McDonald, so he goes. He carries their good wishes with him. Martin Atkinson is our referee today, and there is Kevin McDonald, who turns 50 in the autumn. 
It's a welcome return to the top flight on Tyneside. There are no more passionate fans than those supporting Newcastle United. But Hundy's opener at Man U, a swift reminder of the difference in class when you step up to the Barclays Premier League. Houston, a lot of team that sealed the Toons rock to the championship last year. So a certain sense of symmetry at St James's Park today. And Newcastle in those famous black and white stripes. Spreading the play here is Joey Barton looking for Wayne Routledge. One of the connections between the two clubs here. Newcastle starting with that 3-0 defeat at Manchester United on Monday. Similar scoreline, but in Aston Villa's favour against West Ham on the opening day. Forward by Colaccini, met by Richard Dunn. Here's Mark Brighton. Someone given a chance to flourish under the welcoming wing of Kevin McDonald. Jose Enrique. Interesting to see when Old Brighton picked up that ball. Stephen Island running beyond him towards the left back area. It will take a while for. All Brighton, very much a new boy himself, uh, to get in tune with the uh, newest boy, uh, uh, Stephen Island. Very talented, skillful midfield player, makes good forward runs and can pick up a goal from midfield. Well, Steve Harper, like Andy Carroll, the new number nine for Newcastle. Not only homegrown, but very local. Harper, who. Uh, Came from CM Red Star uh, almost two decades ago. Stephen Ireland here choosing to wear number nine rather than the number eight vacated by James Milner. And off goes John Carew, shadowed by Mike Williamson. Yeah, both sides have very similar front formations. Uh, Carew being helped as much as possible by Ashley Young. Carew uh, it is. For the Newcastle team, of course, uh, Carroll, the uh, main front man on the ball now, supported by Nolan as much as possible. Nice control from Jose Enrique. And then Nolan, Juanes Gutierrez. Newcastle United wasn't so long ago that fifth place wasn't enough. The late Sir Bobby Robson lost his job as a consequence. The club lost its way. It's only really now they're seemingly balancing budgets and expectations. Yes, they've got a very uh, <coughs> stern chairman who uh, knows the importance of uh, income and expenditure. And uh, because they've learnt some harsh lessons, they will be running the club very, uh, not frugally, but prudently over the next few months. In the not so distant parts, only a uh... A trophy would equate to a successful season on Tyneside. But, uh, after all the power games in the boardroom, and perhaps uh, in some cases some would say downright greed. All those managerial changes too. Stability really has to be the number one target. Big test for young old Brighton against Enrique. Enrique was outstanding last year as uh, Newcastle uh, won the championship. the same group of players really that uh, were relegated by Aston Villa only 15 months ago Carroll climbing Stuart Downing he does tend to switch flanks with all Brighton Ireland playing centrally alongside Stylian Petrov and for Stephen Ireland who uh, was rather out of the frame as far as Roberto Mancini was concerned. Let's not forget, it's only a couple of years since he was Manchester City's Player of the Year. Interesting business, this, for Aston Villa. Not only do they get Stephen Ireland, but they get a, a wedge of cash as well. Here's Carew, linking with Ashley Young. 
Carew. Oh, he didn't look. Opportunity, Patsy should have shot himself. He wasn't at an unreasonable angle, but he didn't look up and he played that ball across. And there's Chris Hewton, what a wonderful job he has done here. Well, even last season in the Championship, Newcastle United were attracting vast crowds that even many Premier League clubs would dearly love to have. Regularly 40,000 plus. Joey Barton over this free kick. As ever, Andy Carroll the target. He had a great chance on Monday at Old Trafford early on. Just a few empty seats in the lowest tier. As you can see behind the goal and to the uh, the corner by the flag there in this uh, wonderful stadium but uh, there'll be very few games in the barclays premier league that uh, aren't uh, full at uh, st james's this year certainly last season they had a take up of way over 90 percent of capacity for every game with a nudge by john carew Barton, Ratledge, Perch, who they recently brought in from Nottingham Forest. Ratledge, well, springing his step early on. Had that brief spell, didn't he, at Aston Villa, which didn't go too well for him, couldn't emerge, and uh, managed to get a transfer to Queen's Park Rangers, and then, of course, he's uh, made this move. One of several successful moves for sensible prices, Williamson another. James Perch will prove to be a sensible signing for just over a million pounds. And again, the physical presence of Carew testing the alertness and stickability of Williamson. Routledge, by the way, at his eighth club now. Much travel for someone only in his mid 20s. Thomas Gutierrez. Uh, Kevin Nolan, really thriving last season, at least in that role just off the main striker. Clever little run, but uh, well shepherded by Don. So important to Aston Villa, what well, successful signing he's been for Martin O'Neill, one of his great successes. Last year, him and Collins came and stabilised the centre of defence. Don Mike Ireland, ex Manchester City. Give it, give it, give it. We're going to see a number of the uh, top clubs over the course of the next week. Some uh, frantic transfer business to be done, I'm sure, especially with this uh, new 25-man rule. Here come Villa, and Ashley Young is through. Harper caught him. And the referee, Martin Atkinson, points to the spot. Well, he got through into that space rather easily when the ball was played through. I think it was Petrov that played it through. You can see Young is the favourite now. Harper comes a little bit late, certainly doesn't get the ball. Whether the ball was running out of play or not is irrespective. He caught his legs and I think he knew straight away. Big one to concede. There was a couple of missed penalties yesterday. Uh, was at West Ham when uh, Carlton Cole failed to beat the uh, splendid... Bolton goalkeeper Jaskalainen. John Carew, 17 goals in all competitions last season. And he's missed. Kicking the ground in disgust at himself there. What a chance for Villa to take the lead early on here. Well, absolutely reckless. An absolutely pathetic kick for a player of his experience. He went for power, obviously, he went to hit it uh, straight and tried to hit it probably into the roof of the net, but um, his last stride was far too long and as a consequence he wasn't over the ball as he hit it. Ashley Young just uh, off the field, receiving a little bit of treatment after that uh, collision with Steve Harper. That should give Newcastle hope. And here comes Nolan. 
And the defenders just covering for each other there for Villa. This is Alan Smith, who's now the vice captain. Can't the let off in big style by John Carew. Of course, the irony there is that if Milner was in their ranks, he probably would have taken that kick. Now safely ensconced at uh, Eastlands for Manchester City. Jose Enrique, Jonas Gutierrez. It's a bright early tempo to the match. Kevin McDonald was speaking about the need for Villa to start well with this wonderful St James Park atmosphere. Poor decision there by O'Brien trying to run Enrique from a deep defensive area. Needed to get that ball away. Ashley Young, John Carew flagged down here. He's got Williamson with him. No real support in Claret and Blue. Newcastle just look a little bit shaky in that back line at the moment. There's another question mark for Chris Hooten which he knows full well, has he got the legs in midfield? Smith, Nolan, Barton against the very best of the Barclays Premier League. Certainly against Manchester United the other night, they found that a problem. Understandable that a few of these uh, Newcastle United players were nervous. Big stage, first home game of the campaign. Here's Ratledge, Carroll outside him, Barton's come forward here, Nolan is there. And that's Richard Dunaway. Gutierrez to Barton, look at Jose Enrique bombing forward, Barton goes for it! What a fantastic goal! Boy, does it feel good to be back! And now Joey Barton might even sh shave off that moustache. Rocket of a shot. Friedel not taken unawares, I thought they gave him a little bit too much room. Here we see it again, Jonas Gutierrez plays that ball in field. There's a great run by Enrique, which opens up a space. But the bomb came from that man, Nolan. Barton, what a shot. Well, Joey Barton has had his fair share of ups and downs. Nearly two years since he scored a penalty against West Brom, his last goal in the Barclays Premier League. But what a thumping start that is for Chris Newton's team here. Having uh, seen Carew squander the penalty. Oh, Joey Barton makes amends. Looks as if the, uh, the moustache has been transferred, even if a few players haven't. It was a terrific run by Enrique to support him on the left of him. And Barton took full advantage. He just moved it half a yard and just drove that ball unerringly. Great goal. Great shot, Friedel no chance. Ashley Young. Villa win uh, the first corner of the match. Well, the other day, Andy Carroll missed a gilt-edged header. And Manchester United came back to score three times. Today it's uh, Aston Villa who've missed their chance, and it's Newcastle United who've taken advantage. Ashley Young. All sorts of uh, holding and pulling and pushing going on in the penalty area. The assistant on this near side is uh, flagging here, Paddy Keane. Oh, Carew went down uh, way too easily there. Burden now on Carew's shoulders. Luke Young. Uh, the pushing and the shoving, never easy uh, for the referee, particularly if there's more than one couple who are uh, embraced. And it's really difficult to pick out the main offender when there's two players uh, challenging each other. Interestingly, yesterday, if we're to uh, be consistent ourselves, Michael Oliver gave one very similar, the new young Premier League referee. 
just yesterday. Much talk of transfer gossip with the young, but he's unlikely to move away from Villa at the moment. He's a high earner and uh, I think one or two advances from a big London Premiership club have been knocked back. Of course, uh, Ashley Young and Luke Young. There's been talk about both. Carew here. Jumped away by Perch. And Kevin McDonald, perhaps not in uh, such a dissimilar role to Chris Hutton some time ago when Chris Hutton was in temporary charge. But, uh, what a goal from Joey Barton today. Carroll, Rantledge, and here's Barton, Rantledge with Perch, making himself available on the outside, or Brighton's block. You were talking earlier about Wayne Rantledge, David, when you think about the uh, transfer money, he joined Villa for 1.25 million in January 2008, two sub-appearances before QPR, QPR paid to half that just a year later. But equally, you look at the business they did with Milner, they doubled their money. It's Jonas Gutierrez. When uh, Newcastle sold Milner to Villa for 12 million, that was really a trigger for Kevin Keegan's departure. And that money wasn't uh, available for him to put on new signings. One play by Williamson. And the goalkeeper uses Colaccini, so both centre backs and the goalkeeper beginning the attack. And it's a good attack. And there's plenty of pace and urgency early on here from the home side. Here's Carroll. Super ball by Routledge, outside of his right foot. My word, played to perfection for Carroll. Well, they really have a game on here now. Ireland. Clever running here from Aston Villa, but uh, Jose Enrique tracking. Well, his marker is uh, Downing. Downing switched to the right temporarily. Maybe to test Enrique on his inside. Enrique, the uh, Argentine, very strong on his left foot. Very good going forward. Was rarely tested, perhaps defensively, in the Championship last year. Whereas in the Barclays Premier League the previous year, he found it tough going. So a lot of eyes and the microscope will be looking closely at his performances this year. But it was outstanding last year. Maybe a booking. It is indeed the uh, first caution of the match. Joey Barton high on Petrov. Could have been nasty. He's had an exciting start. He must just curb his enthusiasm now, not get carried away. Very controversial figure. the Manchester City connections of course uh, Joey Barton is another he's downing well tracked by Gutierrez five years since Villa last one at St James's Park on what was actually an infamous and a shameful day for the tune Yell on target two Gareth Barry penalties but uh, the game best remembered for an on-field bust-up between uh, Lee Bowyer and Kieran Dyer that saw both sent off Stephen Taylor had already been dismissed in the match. Newcastle finishing the game with just eight men. Warnock. Tend to playing. Villa tend to play it a little long at times to try and get to Young running forward. They know he's got the pace. 
probably need to get the ball into uh, Stephen Island just a little bit more to see if they can play a little bit more patiently, work the ball, make the play, get hold of the possession. Probably very equal at the moment territorially. 20 minutes gone. Carew. Luke Young had uh, made a good probing run in behind the Newcastle defenders. Always a danger, he would have been offside. They've retained it well here and downing in striking range. Not a good shot by the uh, ex Middlesbrough winger. Middlesbrough, who seemed to produce uh, quality wingers. His friend Adam Johnson, who he was mainly in front of while this time was at Middlesbrough. Here we see the goal. Super shot. No chance for the American goalkeeper. And uh, great reward. Newcastle's first goal back in the Barclays Premier League. And a belter from Barton it was. So important for Newcastle to build on what was great home form last season. Totally different level now. It's no longer Plymouth, Peterborough and Preston. But nonetheless, they were unbeaten here last year. Carroll for Nolan. Ratledge in support, but it's done in the path of Newcastle United. I thought you were going to give me three... Premier Barclays Premier teams beginning with P there when you went past Plymouth and Portsmouth. I could have given you three B's Bolton, Birmingham, and Blackpool. That would do. Luke Young pressured by Honus Gutierrez. wins they had here last season Newcastle United out of 23 of course at the lower level five draws and Chris Hewton acknowledges the importance of uh, good results at home here once again Ashley Young not relishing that challenge by Smith who's playing as the anchor Newcastle man the deepest of that uh, threesome in midfield there's a second man Nolan and uh, Oh, there's a friend of ours, Sol Campbell. Looks young as ever, just got married. Steve Stone, who looks after Newcastle development with Peter Beardsley now. And another connection between the two clubs, of course, Steve Stone. Three years he had with Aston Villa. But, uh, Aston Villa, although they've had so much possession, it's that Joey Barton strike in the 13th minute, which still separates the sides. Great tackle, Carroll. Ratledge here for Newcastle. It's Ireland in the away this time. Carew, Petrov, Ashley Young through the middle, Colaccini with a cutout, and Barton mopping up. Gutierrez, a surge. A wave of black and white. There's a great run there of Routledge, crossfield, right to left. If Onas Gutierrez could have used him there, is a chance. Ashley Young, just the keeper to beat. Uh, Ashley Young, but the flag is up. Well, Martin Atkinson, an important call here. There have been a fair few of those for the referees in the Barclays Premier League this weekend. An interesting one. It's definitely not offside when that ball was played. There's no question about that. The assistant there may have got it wrong. Of course, the Newcastle defenders stop. Ashley Young won't be too happy. He's gained them a penalty that was missed. Scored a goal there that uh, should have been given, I believe. Well, Joey Barton, who's uh, 
what we call a Marmite character. He's a polarizer. You love him or you hate him. But the Newcastle United fans have taken him to their hearts. They've uh, forgiven some of the previous misdemeanors and they prepared to give him that second chance, which he's uh, taken with great relish here today. So far, Villa wide players, all Brighton and Downing, haven't been able to get into good positions to support uh, Crew and, and Young. I think Ashley Young's done quite well. He's drifted around, he's made some good forward runs. It's in the past, maybe we've seen Ashley Young play uh, more wide, but Alan Smith tackling tenaciously and finding Carroll. And then uh, Smith spinning Ireland, Button going in, the referee's got to sort this out. I don't think Atkinson was quick enough there. The, the foul was, should have been for Smith against uh, Ireland in the first place. There we see it. Does it take the ball? And I'm surprised Atkinson didn't blow straight away. Smith doing a good job, as he did for the first half of last season in the Championship, playing in that role. Well, Joey Barton's got his shooting boots on today. This time the chip, just drifting beyond uh, both Andy Carroll and the Aston Villa defence. He's trying to put a bit of backspin on that ball, hoping that uh, Carroll could penetrate that last line. Commanding header from Williamson, there's Barton to Routledge. It's all uh, with two orthodox wingers here in Routledge and Gutierrez, and well supported by Jose Enrique here. Good cover from Dunn. Yeah, brilliant covering by Dunn. Just got the better of all Brighton on the run. A little bit of experience, Enrique continuing his run, and of course he's got this very good relationship with Jonas Gutierrez. Warm applause, I'm sure appreciated. First Newcastle corner at St James's Park of the new season. Barton with it. Oh, and free to that. Made a bit of a mess of that. The referee uh, must have blown for something else. I don't think Carroll, in my opinion, wasn't Carroll actually. I don't think the goalkeeper was impeded there. I thought that he was uh, unfortunate. Newcastle to get... Here's that uh, goal of Young. You see Colaccini stop. My opinion, very unluckily ruled out. And Newcastle just got to be careful. They're keeping a little bit of a high line. And Young's beginning to penetrate them with one or two runs from just a little bit deeper than... Uh, than his uh, centre forward or stri main striker colleague, Carew. Little touch on was by Kieran Clark inadvertently here for Wayne Routledge. And look at Routledge go. Wayne Routledge, who's uh, always been a player for whom the word potential has been bandied about in previous years, but uh, he's certainly uh, showing some of the, the form here at Newcastle. That, he showed in his younger days. I'm quite sure supporters, I think he got a hat-trick once when he first went to QPR, but I'm sure supporters of QPR and certainly a Villa. I remember him as a kid at Crystal Palace playing against uh, Tottenham's Academy. And you're quite right, Steve, he's always fallen short of the standards that he suggested he might reach. Well, Newcastle with a number of injuries, including Stephen Taylor right now. For uh, Sol Campbell, Stephen Taylor, another centre-back who's uh, trying to overcome injury. Sol Campbell, really, it's more about match fitness for him at the moment, coming into the new season. Ben Gosling also uh, recovering from a bit of a knee problem. Danny Guthrie, likewise, Lovenkrantz on the bench today. 
It is uh, remarkable that a uh, team, even at this early stage of the season, can have uh, so many casualties. Could one reason be, Steve, that they play too many pre-season friendlies? I think so. Could well be, David, yeah. Smith, looking for Carroll, cleverly down for Nolan. Well, Perch did his job very smartly indeed, and now Routledge might be able to capitalise on it. He's looked sharp and alive and very quick at times, Wayne Routledge, he's still ploughing away. Gutierrez, Senrique, those two working brilliantly in tandem. Carroll, it's Nolan! Well stopped by Friedel first time, but he can't deny Nolan the follow-up there. Half an hour gone, Newcastle United 2, Aston Villa nil. Well, it was a truly superb goal, right from the beginning of the move. Carroll did his job, great early cross by Enrique. Nolan goes in, doesn't stop follows. Look at this lovely ball, it was... Onas, again, who played that ball deep in, back post, that's where your big man always is, trying to head that ball back across the goal. He does it perfectly well and unselfishly. Nolan comes in, Friedlazer makes a great attempt. Fri Nolan follows it in again. What a good goal, a picture goal. A fine, fine second goal. Oh, Chris Hutton, life in the top flight, looking good right now. And it's Newcastle United's captain, Kevin Nolan. The goal that really was all about the quality of the link-up play down the left-hand side between Gutierrez and Jose Enrique, which has been a feature of this opening half an hour. Villa, on the one hand, has uh, been... Rather wasteful with Carew missing the penalty. Unfortunate with Ashley Young denied what looked a perfectly good goal. And here is Ashley Young again. Oh, it might still be the block by Perch and away by Barton. Newcastle United living on the edge at the moment. Cleverly on here for Carroll. Clever running again by Newcastle United off the ball. And Routledge to Barton. Routledge again, toying with the defenders, gets the corner off Warnock. And Newcastle certainly moved into another gear. They've got the ascendancy at the moment. They survived that uh, fortuitous uh, penalty miss fortuitous for Newcastle that is and since then they've surged on that was their best attack so far apart from Young's unluckily uh, disallowed goal but uh, a third goal now could uh, make it a fantastic half for the for the Geordies Williamson nearly put through his own goal just back there Barton Williamson and it's Carroll just could not be better for the tune on Tyneside. How they long for a hero wearing number nine. And Carroll delivers. Newcastle United, just after half an hour gone, are three up against Villa. Straightforward corner, deep, high, hanging, goalkeeper couldn't come. It's a Williamson that gets the ball back across, and when the ball is knocked down, Carroll has just got at half a yard when Dunn makes a mess of the clearance, and he swivels and hits that left foot shot low into the corner. Great reward for him, he's had a very good first half, I've been impressed. Toon-tastic! Andy Carroll, 21 years of age. Following in the footsteps of some absolute legends, Alan Shearer, Jackie Milburn, Malcolm McDonald, Andy Cole.
Tyneside has a new hero wearing number nine. Oh, what a first half for Chris Hewton, they certainly are back. The goals flowed last year. More than a ton. And three today. It has been a big scoring weekend. It's been a very big scoring uh, first two weekends in the Barclays Premier League. Shell shot. And they're moving with some vibrance at the moment, aren't they? They're, qu they're quicker than Villa. They've got the bit between the teeth now. And uh, this will be a great test of Kevin McDonald because he has to adjust at half time. Very difficult when you're 3 0 down to pull it out of the fire. And I just think there's certain pressure points now that. Uh, oh, here could be a fourth. Nolan onside. Smith galloping in the middle. He went down. It's Nolan. And Friedel rescues it, along with help from Dunn. But Smith, should that have been a penalty? Well, it's a warm day, and the game is really hotting up. It's, it's, a, it's a tremendously competitive, and Villa are on the ropes. Well, Alan Smith had uh, the word with Martin Atkinson there. Barton trying to thread it through for Gutierrez here. He's up against Luke Young. And it is scrappy, and Luke Young took a wild swipe there. Question is, penalty or no penalty? Well, here we see him beat the offside trap. It's Luke Young that uh, uh, played him on side there. There you see Smith going into the box. It was... Uh, very high position for him. I'm not sure whether it was a penalty. I just think that was a, a coming together of bodies. There you see Smith running. Uh, did he get a touch from Dunn? Did he put his left hand on his shoulder? I think it's justified that the penalty was not given. Anything, I think it was just outside the area too, David. It, it was. All these snap decisions for the referees continue to provide talking points this weekend. I think Villa would be well advised for Dunn to go and pick up Carroll as he came short there. It was Clark that was uh, going with him, the younger centre back, the left footed centre back. I think when you have a centre forward or a striker that's so much on top of his game and with so much confidence as Carroll is here, you put the most experienced central defender against him. And I think that uh, Carroll's movement at the moment is causing them all sorts of problems. We'll talk about Andy Carroll for his uh, prowess in the air, but it's his movement on the ground that has been so effective as well for Newcastle United so far. Aston Villa, certainly very unfortunate with the Ashley uh, Young disallowed goal. They will point to that as a pivotal moment in this match. And here's Carroll just dropping deeper, look at that. And looking for... Uh, Perch against Warnock, who's rather crashed into the ground and put a shudder down the spine, perhaps. Yeah, I don't think it was too much uh, there. But uh, Perch uh, suffers for it. And joins Joey Barton as a player cautioned in this match. His eyes on the ball, I don't think there was any intent there. Yeah, he might have jumped. Well, so far this man not made an impression, been uh, beaten to the ball, and it was Smith that time who's been his warder this half, and he's, uh, he's locked him up well, Smith. Ireland can't get in it. Now showing a little bit of petulance. Just going to have to watch his step now. Villa cannot afford to lose another goal before half-time, because I, 
I really do believe there is certainly no coming back from that. Joey Barton set Newcastle United on their way here today. And since that first goal went in, you can almost visibly see the confidence beginning to flow. And Carroll applauds the, uh, the chip up from Barton. But it is a balmy day in the uh, northeast. Balmy with an L, that is. with the up and under or Brighton now taking on Jose Enrique and the uh, Spanish fullback coming out on top he's had a splendid first half and as, I, as, I, as I was saying earlier very good left back and uh, his last season as he got more experienced in the English game he really came on to some very fine performances Ireland here finding Stylian Petrov Colacini. Huge roar as that to mop of curly hair guides it to safety. Clark launching it towards Carew. Colacini again. And Brighton and Luke Young down this right hand side for Villa. Different goals for Newcastle United in this first half. The bullet shot from Barton. The persistence of Nolan after some wonderful approach play. And Andy Carroll showing his poaching instincts. Jose Enrique pivotal in that uh, second goal, especially in his link up with Gutierrez down this left hand side for Newcastle. Also showing the importance of defending well at the other end. Now Newcastle with Ratledge, Nolan Mobile ahead to the right. Clark cuts it out. Been very busy, hasn't he, Ratledge, in this uh, first half, working up and down that line. And we've had a very hard-working performance on the other side by Honus Gutierrez. It's been a very solid, very comfortable Newcastle performance. Chris Hutton will take great delight in this one, but he will be reminding them of the dangers of complacency at half-time. Same here. Yes, there certainly have been dangers. And uh, Ashley Young, right at the heart of it. Everton will be Aston Villa's opponents in the Barclays Premier League a week today. David Moyes getting a first-hand view. But look at the goal attempts here, 10 to 2. Seven on target. There's always been a tradition up here that Newcastle United play attractive, entertaining football. That was the third from Andy Carroll. Almost as if he was looking at his watch. Can you blow the whistle now for half-time, please? Well, Ashley Young beginning to uh, feel as if every decision is going against him. But, uh, it is Villa's ball. What a difference it could make if they pull one back here. Downing. Tester for the defenders. It was uh, Andy Carroll back there. Oh! 
The home fans really reveling in this at the moment. They just need to keep it to blank for Villa. Downing. <laughs> oh, they're just not getting the bounce, are they, Villa, in this first half? There are two added minutes. Crowd certainly getting value for money here today. Plenty of uh, action at both ends. Comfortable <laughs> cut out for James Perch. Two centre-backs, Williamson and Colaccini, have really put every pound of flesh behind those strong defensive headers. Perch gaining a bit of confidence from the right-back position as the game goes on. And Barton to Smith. They've got their fair share of grafters in central midfield, haven't they? Routledge with speed down the flanks. Colaccini to Barton. Petrov. Now last Monday night, Villa were chasing the ball at Old Trafford. Uh, Newcastle chasing the ball at Old Trafford and now uh, they're making their opponents chase the ball and that's that's good for them. They've been the main players in possession of the ball and they're doing to Villa what United did to them on Monday. For the first half, reminiscent in many ways of the heady mid-90s under Kevin Keegan, it's been hugely exciting and entertaining, notably for Newcastle, with both uh, Joey Barton Kevin Nolan and Andy Carroll all on target. And Aston Villa will point to the squandered penalty from John Carew. They'll point to the disallowed goal against Ashley Young. Can't take anything away from Newcastle, though. They've uh, been exciting going forward. They've been reasonably solid defensively. And they are flying at the break. Up in the northeast, Newcastle United 3, Aston Villa 0. I'm John McCurry and I'm Chief Executive of the uh, Newcastle West End Food Bank. Essentially over the course of the month we would issue food parcels to about 800 people on average every month and those parcels are issued to people who can't really afford food. We get people coming for all sorts of uh, strange and wonderful reasons and we just try and support them at their time of need. I don't forget when I start, you know, in, in for this for me it's really important to come here for for talk with some people because you have some people don't have a lot of money for come uh, every week in a stadium but they love football but they cannot come always and this for me it's important and what I see today it's amazing you have a lot of people take a really long time for for do some eat and this it's really really good. We have uh, Alan along today. Um, and that's great in some ways because it really promotes and it's great to see the footballers having a big interest in what's happening in, in their community. But the other thing that it does, like the match day collections, is raises the profile of poverty and food hunger in the city for many families. For me, when you have the money, if you can help, like, do what you want, like, it's in a time, give a time or give a money, do what you feel, you know, if you want to do some things. You have to do it if you want it, and this is really important. It's for this I'm happy to be in this club, because they, they do a great things. Our colleagues and fans from uh, the Newcastle Fans Food Bank got together and set up what they called essentially NUFC Fans Food Bank. So that on match days we go along to St James's Park on Strawberry Place, uh, park up our van 
and just get out the collection buckets and uh, really collect food and cash donations from the public. Uh, I got to say the generosity is overwhelming. Um, their support actually keeps us going throughout the course of uh, the year. Without it, we'd be lost. And um, really, it helps us meet the demand coming in from, from people. So the resources you see today, the only reason we can deliver them is because of the support of the club. To get the issue uh, promoted into the public eye really creates more of awareness. And when things like this happen, we can see a rise in food donations. And that's only all to the good for us because it then helps us meet the demand. So that friendly circle and relationship with the club, with the uh, Fans Food Bank and with the fans making those donations is essential to our survival really and meeting the needs of people who can't afford food. players and the staff and all the rest of it's blue like a, a normal day in a normal training session and uh, you know last week we we're all delighted to be taking part in step one and of course making sure that everything worked and I have to say the players physically have come back in in good shape which is which was vitally important um, so yesterday today was a bit like normality um, this afternoon we'll know more of course of when we're looking to start and I think that's vitally important is that the players and the staff have a have a start date because when you're training and preparing, the one thing we're all looking for is that is that date. So hopefully there's a bit of good news this afternoon, and uh, we get we get we get that we get that uh, date, which is vitally important. To be honest, everyone's been chomping at the bit to get back. I think you, you you spend three or four days not playing football, and then you you're twiddling your thumbs and you're looking at your phone all the time to see if there's been a date when we can go back and stuff. And it, it felt like forever that we're off. Um, luckily, everyone's kept in pretty good shape. Everyone's came back um, really fit, and um, it's been brilliant. But now I think we can sort of focus on the the good part and, and look forward to preparing for games and, and hopefully. Oh, I think, like I said before, everyone's uh, desperate for the games to come back around. I think that's why I'm training. Um, 
the, the level and the tempo has been so good because everyone's looking for a, for a place in the team. Welcome to Storm Gain Question Time, where I'm joined by Alan St Maximin, Matty Longstaff, the captain Jamal Lascelles, the defender Fabian Shah, and we've got Carl Darlow, the goalkeeper here at Newcastle United. Yeah, it's a big challenge for me because before I play in the French and it's really different, you know, the league. For me, England, it's the best league and it's a big challenge because I play in England, I have to talk different because I have to speak English and for me it's, it's really different in the dressing room with my partner, with everything, but I feel much better now. Okay, what is your nickname? Maxi? Yeah. Maxi coin? Yeah, no. Maxi, Maxi, that's it. My favorite position is number 10. Yeah? Yeah. I love play there because I can go everywhere. I am more free than when I play in the left or in the right. It's more difficult for the defender to catch me. Yeah, striker. <laughs> Has to be. So you know what you're doing. Where you're doing. Yeah, but obviously they get the glory as well. Right? So it's completely different to, to what we do. We obviously try and keep the ball out of the net. And um, I think, obviously, the, I think strikers that score goals obviously go for big money and make big money. So that's where it's at. Um, this was already like 10 years ago. And on this time, I think crypto wasn't like that high rate like now. Yeah, I think a few of the lads obviously here last year got involved with it and um, I think it boomed quite a bit last year and obviously started to recline a little bit again. Yeah, I know some friends who are working uh, with Bitcoins and this stuff. Um, probably a bit of both, I think you've got to put the hard work in and to, just to get the stage that, that I got to there and then I think obviously um, a bit of luck comes into it with, with the way it felt was and stuff from Jet Row, so I think it's a bit of both. I do more assists but score is good because you, you can do some celebration but I love to do assists, I think I prefer to do assists. My best moment, I think it's when I was in Nice, when I play, when we play two times against Snap in Ligue des Champions, I think it's my best moment. Yeah, because you play in Champions League and it's a it's great feeling. For me, I like, um, I was early away from home, uh, away from my family, from the friends. So um, it's not easy sometimes, you, you miss the things to do with um, the stuff with family, with friends and um, yeah, but at the, at the other side you have to, to, you can play in big leagues so, um, so I really like, it's nice to do it. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> all, all in training. Forest. Double, all double oh, penalty. Yeah. Um, yeah, penalty saves are always good, and then uh, I think last-minute saves are, are the ones that stick stick by you when you've won the game and save the team at the end. Personally, I think uh, when we played Forest, he made two two penalty saves in one game. That's it's quite rare for a, for a goalie to do that. So um, it's a shame we didn't win, but yeah.
United emerge. To say, David, that uh, looking at the first half, you were talking about Carroll and Nolan, the way they were playing together. Nolan, the captain now. But, uh, Nolan playing just off Carroll. You watch how he follows Andy Carroll around, and he's just looking for those little knockdowns. That's something that uh, has already shown itself to be effective. Carroll, even at 21, is already showing the sort of confidence, prowess expected of a Newcastle United number nine. He actually went to school at Gateshead. Kevin Nolan, the Newcastle United captain. Just having a word with Martin Atkinson, our referee here. But it's Newcastle United who lead 3-0. A hugely entertaining first 45 minutes at St James's Park. It's in store in the next three quarters of an hour. Newcastle United, three goals to the good. Taking from left to right towards the Gallagate end in the second half. And that's uh, Joey Barton who put the Newcastle United Premier League campaign on the right track here today after John Carew had missed his penalty. Joey Barton with a crunching shot. There's Enrique here. Andy Carroll, who scored the third. Oh. The hands against a Petrov. Barton trying to slot it through. Just gets a touch back to Carroll. Down for once, that it is. Lovely back post position. Started that move by serving down the left hand side. But kept possession well. But uh, when they were looking to cross the ball, they realised that uh, Carroll was in their own area out on the left, and therefore they were reluctant to play the high ball into the back post. It's the ball that they've really benefited from this afternoon. Something we were discussing earlier, David, about uh, Andy Carroll and Kevin Nolan, the way they link up. Here they are. That's uh, Nolan with the pull down for Barton. And Nolan in space, looking for Carroll. Trying to return the compliment. Villa a slap then around the box. Got to pick up tighter than that. Williamson blocking Ashley Young. Not Williamson who uh, was actually in the Premier League with Portsmouth, but didn't actually play any games for them. Well, he's just dispossessed Ashley Young, both ex-Watford players, of course. Williamson came there from Wickham Wonders. It was a splendid spot. He uh, did quite well at Watford. Got the move to Portsmouth very quickly, and uh, it was uh, a strong recommendation. Really watch this. And Carew going in, and Steve Harper was uh, comfortably there for Newcastle. A strong recommendation by the Portsmouth coaching staff to Chris Hewitt and Colin Hollywood that uh, got Williamson around the deadline last year to uh, Newcastle, and he's done very well. Carroll looking to get in behind Richard Dunn. He's going to actually get to two teams here who uh, are showing that the Barclays Premier League does also nurture a great deal of great young talent. Gutierrez has three overseas imports in the Newcastle starting 11 today. Clark away. Villa have got to be tighter, they've got to be more determined, and they have no choice but to push their back line a little bit further up the field to push their midfield closer to their front men. Ashley Young. And well, Marshalls. Matt Williamson. Very tight to Ashley Young here. Frustrating afternoon. He's been irritated a couple of times by decisions that went against him in the first half. It'll be interesting to know what his uh, mindset is now. Milner's gone. He started, of course, with Agbon Lahore and uh, 
Milner and himself last season as a very progressive front three. Agbon Lahore now out. Heskey not probably uh, producing the form of old. So the whole forward thinking, and that means front players, has changed at Aston Villa. Just one little footnote for the about young players that have been developed by these two clubs. Aston Villa, who've had the young Parkers player of the year for the last two seasons with Ashley Young and then James Miller. Stephen Ireland here, who's Milner's replacement on his 24th birthday. for him to take over the mantle of the number nine. I know we've uh, made a point of talking about it, but there probably isn't a club in the country where the pressure on a number nine is as great as this. And usually, you know, they have to be speedy. I tell you the story of uh, Mick Carford, who's a very, very fine centre forward. I bought and sold him a couple of times. And um, he went to Newcastle. And by Gutierrez, too high for Carroll this time. Signed by Arthur Cox at Newcastle in one of his first games as a long ball. He went chasing it and the centre half beat him for pace. And he knew then that his future may not be at Newcastle. Well, Routledge who has certainly got his present at Newcastle. Smith to Nolan. To Carroll. Really great awareness there from Carroll. Clever, intelligent play by the big number nine. No change of tactics by Kevin McDonald, and uh, Villa need to shake themselves a little bit here. This uh, Newcastle and all those ageing legs in midfield. Well, S Smith and Nolan perhaps, but um, they're still on top, and they've still got, got the tempo of the game. Uh, Chris Hutton with Colin Calderwood alongside him there. Winning the championship in his first full year in charge. And confirmed as the permanent manager back at the end of October last year. He showed himself to be a very capable man as a number one, which uh, many people possibly didn't expect. And Smith trying to nudge it through. So often seen as a number two, Chris Hutton. What a great coach. Is that further? 
Well, just watch Old Brighton on this run now. He hasn't had the best of afternoons. Can he produce something? Oh, running into a bit of a cul-de-sac there with the two Newcastle players there. Yeah, Chris Hewton, a very responsible guy. Anything you ask him to do, he would do. Um, real hard worker. Took a lot of responsibility. Um, and organised the, organised the play as well. He uh, took the reserve side, he was involved in the first team at Tottenham, but a uh, very loyal servant and was well appreciated at Tottenham. Villa desperately need to pull one back early on. And if anything, it's uh, Newcastle United who have confidence coursing through their veins here. I just think Petrov, there's Mr Lambias, the uh, managing director. He is the man that uh, Chris Hewton has to speak to most of the time. Sometimes Mr Ashley is very busy. Uh, pressure here on Harper. And from the sidelines is that Emil Heskey could be replacing all Brighton in just a moment. There is Emil Heskey. That's not a surprise, Steve. See Ashley Young play uh, a little wider. And here by Ireland. Williamson clears. It's Luke Young. And here is all Brighton. He's a great young prospect, but it's uh, proving a tough task for him today. Here's Enrique to Gutierrez. Those two again. What a great flank they've had. Working well in tandem. Time Carroll had got across to the near post, and the, uh, the cross was a fast uh, ball across the six yard box, well held by the, the goalkeeper. But, uh, maybe he could have flighted a higher ball, but uh, Carroll wasn't at the back post. Smith. from Perch to dispossess Guru. Quite a shadow now over the St James's Park ground. I don't think it's a handicap at the moment to uh, to Harper. Now the uh, sun very much behind the main stand. Here's uh, Ravlich, Perch galloped on ahead of it. Enrique Gutierrez. They haven't really found a way to uh, combat the two of them. Gutierrez yeah. is a much improved player. There's many doubts cast when uh, Maradona picked up the Argentinian national team, but he's one of his favourite players. And there's Old Brighton. He's had a, had a decent day, but he hasn't been able to get the better of Enrique right from the early stage of the game. And, Experience is all good for him. He had a very fine first game last week in the Barclays Premier League. This week, not so bright, and that's how it will be. He'll be up and down as he finds his feet. Well, Emil Heskey here, David, coming on for his 500th Career League appearance. Great milestone for him today. Yes. I still feel he was at his best in those latter days at Leicester City. Um, very good career, of course. I think he's Birmingham, Liverpool. Um, modest man, unfairly criticised by a lot of people because of his uh, goal tally. Baldini here looking at the game today. He was at uh, West Ham. So the Italians are doing their job at the weekends. At least they're going to watch the games. Whether they can revive the fortunes of the England team is another question. Gutierrez <laughs> immediately crowded out by Heskey and uh, Luke Young. Certainly meant the need for Villa to get to grips with Newcastle's left flank. A real foray forward from Luke Young here. And then Colaccini just flicking it against his uh, opponent. Is he staying wide at the moment? The option of putting in more central and playing Young wide is still there. So now Heskey down the right flank for Aston Villa. And a nice little nudge on from Nolan. Carroll with a weighted through ball, and Routledge might pounce here. 
Great yeah. defending by Don, but I have to say it was also superb play by Routledge, where he brought that ball down out of the air. Carroll's striding, just a little bit more pace on that ball. Routledge really is uh, looking in sparkling form today. Parted with Newcastle's third corner. Once again, it was young Kieran Clark that was marking Carroll at the back post, and that's where I think McDonald may have made a change today, particularly on the set plays, given done that responsibility. Well, this morning on uh, UK radio, the uh, well-known American coach Bob Bradley was asked about uh, his contact with Aston Villa and whether he would like to be the next Aston Villa boss. He said he'd be interested, but there has been no official contact. And I certainly put down a marker there and uh, encouraged Randy Lerner to uh, make the call. I think you and me would be interested, wouldn't we, Steve? We haven't had contact either. <laughs> well, that's true. I think we're better qualified to be David to be perfectly fine. Uh, it's a name because of the American connections, which are certainly being repeated in the English media quite frequently at the moment. Kevin McDonald has done himself no harm in the first two matches, but this is a bit of a dent. Well, you're not going to win them all, and you're going to have to learn. And I, I, I just feel the one-for-one one change, uh, Heskey for Carew, which I thought was a possibility. I don't think it's been enough. I think they need a tactical change. I think they need a change in the middle of the field. Just uh, thinking about uh, caretakers who have gone on and taken the role on a full-time basis. Of course, Chris Hutton, we've mentioned. Tony Adams at Portsmouth. Mario Sanchez did that at Fulham as well. It does happen. Not too frequently, but it does. And sometimes it can work very favourably too. Well, here is John Carew. Let's key down the outside here. And he's got the, the physical strength to hold off Enrique. And it, uh, it is a Newcastle throw. Carew and Heskey should give them a little bit more power, but it's now just whether the midfield is a little bit open. Heskey out wider where all Brighton was placed. And a good link up between Carroll and Nolan, and now Routledge bearing down on goal. Wayne Routledge blocked by Friedel. Another terrific wave of Newcastle players bursting forward. Important save. But if uh, Villa can do anything, they must must get a goal very quickly now, or else the quite sure the last 20 minutes or so Newcastle will keep hold of that ball and make Villa chase. Determined, young Routledge, quick, but a great save by Friedel. David, but uh, certainly making a front two as Newcastle are playing today with uh, Carroll and Nolan. It's uh, always curious for me to see how well they work together. It's not just about how they do individually, but how they move off each other. I just think Nolan plays it well, but he is much deeper. If you look at the build-up when Villa are building up, he is on the halfway line. He's not playing right up against him. Here's another change, Rio Coca. I mean, the old Brighton change we probably half expected, but that, the biggest change I think should have been this guy. I think he's been very disappointing, but maybe that's a bit harsh. Well, certainly in the tenth minute, he was hugely disappointed. You saw how he uh, kicked the ground and uh, disgusted himself for blasting the penalty that Villa had early on over the crossbar. And now there's pressure on Clark. Not properly away, here's Routledge for Newcastle. Cleverly screens it, lays it off for Perch. Away by Clark. Decent ball then once again. Carroll pulling across. I just wonder if Heskey from that wide rightish position can do better than Old Brighton. Certainly can't run as quick. 
as Peru does come off. Will surely go into midfield. There's going to be another yellow here. Mr. Smith. Oh, just uh, late catching the ankle of Heskey. Be careful, don't talk too much. Well, it is John Carew coming off here. Surprise. Interesting to see what Kevin McDonald does with the Villa tactics here. Will he throw Heskey up through the middle? Surely he will. Yes, I think so. Rio Coca may have. You know, Rio Coca is not the best distributor of the ball, but he, he is a presence in midfield in terms of tackling and enthusiasm. He's got great running power. That was the question mark I put against Newcastle coming into this game today in midfield, but uh, they, they've, uh, they've carried it well. Baldini looking will probably report that it's not Ashley Young's best position unless he's playing with a very talented front centre forward who can look after the ball better. Well, Franco Baldini may well be looking at the likes of Andy Carroll on a day like today as well. <laughs> Climbing by Richard Dunn all over the back of Carroll. in any hurry to take the free kick. Disappointing debut so far for Stephen Island and uh, the Villa midfield. Joey Barton with Newcastle's free kick here. Newcastle scampering across in the shadows, have a corner. Well, this is an Matt Barton's moustache, by the way. He's only promised to shave it off if uh, Newcastle win. Someone uh, jokingly said to me, I wonder if they'll shave it off at half-time, but he would be taking liberties, I think. He has scored, but Newcastle certainly haven't won just yet. Colaccini there. That's almost the screen for Andy Carroll behind him. Thumped by Gutierrez. Charged down by Luke Young. Barton gets a touch. Carroll! What a fabulous afternoon for Newcastle. And what a brilliant day for Andy Carroll, their new number nine. The perfect return to the Barclays Premier League for Newcastle. Well, when the ball comes out, we see the header, the first header, more determination. It breaks for Carroll, he's not offside. Dunn gets across to him, but he's just that little bit too late. Once again, in the first place, Williamson just winning out against Clark in the air. Carroll first to the ball, and as it drops, his timing is perfect. Who would have thought it? Newcastle United 4, Aston Villa 0. And there's a former number nine who will be lapping up every minute of this, Alan Shearer. Alan Shearer, who was in charge when Newcastle last faced Aston Villa. On the day that Newcastle hearts were sunk in the Midlands. Peter Beardsley watching on some great uh, former players. It's not just about the history of Shearer and Beardsley, it's about the present and the future of Andy Carroll. Almost like the Angel of the North. You know, when you think about it, Steve, those Villa supporters, when they won that penalty early on, and they must have thought, here, what a chance, we can go 1-0 up away from home. 
Would that have made Newcastle dispirited? Who knows? Would it have changed the face of the game? Can never tell. But certainly the way the game has turned out, Newcastle have been much superior. Well, it's just there ahead of Clark. He's had a hard game, Clark. It's been very tough for him this afternoon. Here. He's got a bit of cramp, I think. I was just uh, wondering whether he's looking for a bit of assistance from Alan Smith, but well, this place is one of the special venues in English football. Packed to the rafters here today. Yeah, they used to say that the uh, crowd behind the goal used to suck the ball into the net. That's what they used to say before this new fantastic stadium was built, the Gallagher 10. It is a wonderful stadium. The view that Friedel gets from his goal, defending his goal there now, at the other end of the ground with a massive highest, the highest bank in, in England of any Barclays Premier League ground. It's fantastic. Just over 20 minutes to go. Barton with the free kick. Gutierrez. And fans up and down the land have been treated to Goals are plenty this weekend and last. And this match proving no exception. I don't know that you would have found even the most optimistic of Newcastle fans thinking that the team that finished sixth last season and indeed for the last three years would be trailing in their weight by four clear goals with 20 minutes to go. It really is a bit of a dream for Newcastle at the moment and a bit of a nightmare for Villa. Steve, I think we were there on that day when Newcastle played so anemically in their last game in the Barclays Premier League when they were relegated. It seems an age ago, of course it wasn't, but uh, how Chris Hutton and Colin Calderwood has revived the spirit of the Geordies and I have to say that man's been very important to him. I was very impressed. I saw him four times last year in the Championship. Each time he won those type of headers at will. Again, it's that ability, sheer or like, if you like, to just drop a little deeper and flick those balls on. That uh, gives them such an aerial advantage. And now Ireland on his Villa debut. Stephen Ireland went for the glory. And Barton. Oh, putting it out of play here because of an injury to Warnock. What a transformation in the mood among the Newcastle fans, David, in those 15 months. Not everybody expected them to bounce straight back. No, I was one of those that thought they just might falter around Christmas time. They didn't. And on reflection, it's easy in, uh, l later on. It's uh, at the time, you you're never sure. But they did use the transfer window well. They supported their team with the likes of Routledge and uh, Williamson. Stephen Warnock getting back to his feet here. I think uh, Miller will certainly struggle to do that here against a, a Newcastle team that has flourished and grown as the afternoon has gone on. Two great players, Chris Hutton, whose playing career was ended at the age of 34. Colin Calderwood, of course, played for Scotland, as well as uh, playing for Aston Villa. Indeed, I think I, we took him from Aston Villa to Tottenham as a coach. Of course, I had a little spell at Nottingham Forest as a player. Just scanning back the last time Newcastle scored four in the Barclays Premier League. It was away to Tottenham, rather curiously, at the end of March 2008. the first time in a couple of years that the Newcastle United fans have been able to celebrate seeing their team score four goals in the English top division. A great shame if this uh, result uh, harms 
Kevin McDonald's chances of getting the job. I think the most important thing will be to see how they react to this uh, bad defeat. I think we can safely say it will be a bad defeat. Uh, you have to say that Villa as an attacking force have not tested Harper apart from a couple of efforts in that first half. This second half has been very much Newcastle playing with the same tempo, the same verve as they showed in the first period. The, they are the better team, there is no question. The change is being readied by uh, Newcastle United. Ryan Taylor, Shola, Shola Amiobi. And here's Kevin Nolan. Smith, away by Warnock, steered cleverly to Routledge. Delicate football here from the tune. Luke Young hasn't got it away. Carroll looking for a hat trick. It's a corner. Villa all over the place. Terrific determination by Newcastle. It was uh, Gutierrez in the first place that was persistent. Lovely little ball, difficult ball to defend. Played up there by Routledge. Carroll knocks it back. Into the goal, there's an appeal for a penalty, I think they were appealing for on the byline there. Well, a double change here, with 15 minutes to go. In the meantime, Williamson comes in. All sorts of pressure put on Kieran Clark there. And, uh, losing his boot in the process. Changes now, here we go. First up, Alan Smith. Done a good job. Stop the early movements of uh, Stephen Island. The anchor man in the midfield. Did a good job. And the other change, Wayne Routledge. Shola Amiobi to uh, come on, but Routledge getting a very warm reception here. He really does look to be thriving under Chris Hewton. Absolutely. I think it's important sometimes just to put an arm around people's shoulders, particularly if things haven't gone too well from the past. They've taken players here who haven't done that well at other clubs, but have thrived here. And to Colocini. Nolan who went in for Newcastle, final touch off Petrov. Well, you can certainly say that Newcastle have had the ascendancy in the air. They have put those balls in their box at every opportunity, and Villa have been found wanting. Colicini, Carroll, Amiobi, a triple threat here. Fisky, uh... Having to help out defensively, Ashley Young with Ireland going zooming through the middle. Villa have rather wilted after the first half disappointments. It's not been the sort of response that uh, Villa fans would have hoped for. That's Clark under pressure from Carroll. Gutierrez, oh, right on the corner of the box. The referee shows uh, a yellow card to Nigel Rio Coca. He came inside and looked young so easily there. Rio Coca did his best. My word, he did really catch Luke Young there. He's a little bit unfortunate there. I think he's been a thorn in the side all afternoon, uh, Jonas Gutierrez. He's really run progressively down that left. Had Ratledge down the right. If you've got two wingers doing the business, then your front men have got a chance. Just an uh, interesting point I'd like to make about uh, the award of the free kick here. Well, you know what happened between Arsenal and Blackpool yesterday. Let's discuss that in a moment, but uh, 12 minutes to go. And Ryan Taylor. His last two Premier League goal, goals have both been against Newcastle. Just a fraction wide there. Just 
to make a point, David, about the uh, award of the free kick there because the uh, the tackle maybe starting just outside and drifting on into the penalty area just reminded me a little bit of uh, Ian Everts' uh, tackle for Blackpool yesterday that led to a penalty. I remember Howard Webb saying to me a couple of years ago that although the offence may begin just outside the penalty area, if it continues into the penalty area, it should be a penalty. Just wonder whether there might have been a claim there. He certainly did finish inside there. Oh, here's a man who Newcastle fans haven't seen too much of. Cisco. Short for Francisco. He was uh, loaned out last season. The uh, Spanish striker. Was it to Racing Santander last year? Came as a sub at Old Trafford on Monday. Looks as if he's imminent here. I think this is the player that probably came when there was the dispute with Kevin Keegan over the over the transfer. He originally came in from uh, Deportivo La Coruña. He's a player who's yet to show the Newcastle fans what he's capable of. He's coming on here for Honor Gutierrez. He's played very well. Very difficult. When you pick up the ball and run quickly at defenders, you, you really put them on their heels. And uh, he's done that in splendid fashion today. There is a question mark over his uh, vision or seeing of pictures when he's in possession of the ball. But uh, Honor Gutierrez has done splendidly today. Petrov. First contribution from uh, Francisco Jimenez Tejada. Francisco for sure. He used to be a Cisco kid. I think he was a cowboy. Was totally different thing, though. Oh, totally okay. different. <laughs> Ten minutes for Villa to redeem themselves in some fashion. Downing. Too strong for Clark, as Jose Enrique. He's a marshal that to left hand side so well. Let's go to Cisco. Cisco kid just ahead of him now. Not quite a high noon kickoff. There's a free kick for Ashton Villa. Cisco on Luke Young. We'll probably lose that edge in the last few minutes now as Chris Hutton settles on the four goal advantage. They don't want to concede any by the same token, but they'll probably lose that attacking edge. And Ashton Young straight against the substitute who. Charge is clear, and Villa could be caught cold here. Cisco needs support. Barton left. Ryan Taylor through the middle here. And he couldn't pick out Colocini. It was cut out by Ireland. Unfortunately, he gets no marks for that, but what an opportunity. Warm applause for Aniobi. almost six and a half years for the last time Newcastle United scored four goals at home in the Barclays Premier League it's against Everton Rio Coca and uh, Ryan Taylor leaving it there for the uh, skipper and then cleared by Perch would have been fascinating, hypothetical, of course, had Martin O'Neill been sitting in that man's position today, how he would have reacted uh, to this uh, to this game, this result and this performance. Martin might have suggested that they have to have more investment and, of course, that's where the problem came. The chairman feels that they've uh, spent quite a bit of money and they have to generate some themselves. Ireland pretty well sums up his and Aston Villa's afternoon. Too much to celebrate on his 24th birthday today. No, we, we said earlier on that it would take time for him to gel with the other players, for him to get to know the other players, and that's how it will be. 
I think it was a brave decision to put uh, Ireland in the team today. To be honest, I think he might have been better sitting on the bench and maybe having a tougher midfield with someone like Rio Coca in there with Petrov today. You know, Newcastle's first game at home back in the Barclays Premier League, they were always going to be on a high, they were always going to be a great further here today. And I always thought it was going to be a very difficult game for Villa, as we said when we came in, Steve. Very difficult game to call. I thought that Newcastle had a very good chance today, but uh, we didn't expect such a one-sided game. Could have been such a different story too. John Carew in the tenth minute with that uh, penalty kick that uh, he blasted over. And the goal that was disallowed for offside against Ashley Young, which clearly uh, was onside. Here's Heskey against Colacini. These players have to avoid becoming too disillusioned. They have to pick themselves straight up. Perhaps an advantage to have a European event immediately on the horizon this week for Aston Villa. It will be a radically different team, but for the club, so important to move on. Ashley Young with it. Oh, drifting over the forehead of uh, Richard Dunn there, just flicked his forehead. Been an uncomfortable afternoon for the ex Manchester City captain of Villa. He's defended strongly, but he's been unable to control his back line as Gutierrez, Ratledge, and Carroll have had such a splendid afternoon. Courageous captain. Carroll, what a great flick that was to Amiobi. Shallow Amiobi, almost the icing on the cake. Once again, Carroll flicks it, but he's, he's flicking it against Young Clark. And I believe that it should be done all the game who should have been challenging Carroll and leaving Clark to do the tidying up just behind. I think that's been a, a mistake that they've made and they've continued to make. I just think Carroll's had so much of an advantage in the air. Oh, the second time in the match, Clark has lost his footwear. Anthony Atkinson allowing the youngster to uh, just sort himself out here. Amiobi comes in, and it's just jacked home. Kevin Nolan, the captain, rounds off a perfect afternoon for Newcastle United. Chris Hutton and Colin Calderwood, they can only have dreamt about a day like this. 5-0 to Newcastle. Once again, corner kick, aerial problem, scramble. Nolan reacts, stands in front of the goalkeeper, good position, comes off the line, hooks it in. Villa all over the place. They have really been shocked today. And for that man, well done, Chris Hutton, well done, Colin Collingwood. Thoroughly deserved win. Hope the chairman appreciates it. Well, I think uh, he's slightly injured in the process, but he won't care one jot. Nolan with his second of the game. Remember that day when they scored five against Manchester United, that immaculate lob from Philippe Albert? This is uh, one of those sorts of days for Newcastle United. When you think of all those Geordie fans who've come here today, sacrificed their Sunday lunch, sacrificed their pint in the pub. Well worth missing the lunch for this one, Steve. We'll make up with a pie or two afterwards, perhaps. Two minutes to go. Oh, just needs Carroll to get a hat trick. And we'll have another of the 6 0 score lines that have been prevalent in the opening couple of weeks. Barton takes it quickly. The whistle had already gone. There is a, another change to be made. And uh, Habib Bay returning to a familiar stadium here today. Habib Bay, who came to the UK with Newcastle 
from Marseille. 52 league appearances for them before joining Aston Villa and he comes on for the rather frustrated and overpowered Kieran Clark. Yes, it's very easy from this position to be critical and we shouldn't be too critical, but Kieran Clark's had a very hard afternoon today and I would have probably left him for the last couple of minutes, but uh, Bay's come on. Ryan Taylor has taken over set pieces from uh, Joey Barton since he's come on. Now Ashley Young, Ireland right, and Luke Young left. Ashley Young, Esky drifts forward, Rio Coco. A great round of applause for Colagini, and uh, stayed forward as part of that Newcastle attack. It's good to see the support that they got there when Danny broke with that ball. Ireland and Young desperate to get forward, they're still trying Villa, but uh, <clears throat> it's one of those days. Three added minutes. Three minutes away from a huge draw at St James's, I'm sure. In recent years, so often a chorus of boos have greeted the full-time whistle in previous top-flight seasons when things have gone against them. And they've seen some real lows in recent years. Last year, very much a different story in the championship. But this surpasses all of that. took the championship by the scruff of the neck last season and they've done pretty well the same to Aston Villa here today and even the most ardent Newcastle United fan would never have expected this outside really shows how Aston Villa have just drifted as this match has gone on, they've lacked the edge. They've played a high line the whole game, haven't they, Newcastle? They've kept uh, Villa away from the goal. They ha had a dubious offside advantage given to them in the first half when Young got away and scored that goal that I believe should have been allowed. But apart from that, their tactics of playing that high line hasn't been exposed by the Villa forwards. Once the sun is most definitely shining on Newcastle United. Contrast with their next fixture away in the League Cup midweek to Accrington Stanley. Manchester United one week, Accrington Stanley the next. Here's Amiobi. Trying to dance his way to goal, and he's won a corner. Well, he'll go home on the bus, Mr. Bay, and uh, he feel he wasn't responsible for any of the goals today. Ireland. Inviting Ashley Young to launch himself, but to uh, perch. Oh, just caught there, and Ashley Young with an early chance here to release Downing. Back heel from Williamson, who's been very sure and composed at the back alongside Colaccini. Warnock cuts in. And here's Carroll. Wayne does the home team's man of the match. Warriors crossfield ball for Cisco. Oh, looking for Carroll. Hat trick moment. Hat trick for Andy Carroll. Perfection. 6 0. And a brand new hero emerges on Tyneside. The last number nine who they lauded here is watching from the stands. But Andy Carroll is lapping it up. A hat trick for him, six for Newcastle. It is absolutely the perfect day for the two. Well, he's given a performance reminiscent of the best centre forward, the best striker in the Premiership, the Barclays Premiership this season. 
and that's Drogba. His cross-field ball then out to the left was fantastic. His following up was superb, and the way he rolled that in past the goalkeeper, Friedel, was absolutely top class. Yes, there's no doubt about it, Steve. Man of the match, Baldini's been here today. Now we, have, we do have a potential number nine. I have to say it, he, he's definitely a chance of finally, not finally, but getting amongst the England players who will have a chance of getting that uh, special white shirt. Wonderful performance by the centre forward, but a great team performance by Newcastle in this Barclays Premier League game. Even in their wildest dreams, Newcastle United would surely not even have dreamt this. Andy Carroll with a hat-trick on Newcastle United's top flight return at home at St James's Park today. Aston Villa will point to a couple of key moments in the first half that went Newcastle's way, notably Carew squandering a penalty and Ashley Young having a goal disallowed. But here today, Andy Carroll has emerged, he's blossomed, he's matured, he has become the cult figure on Tyneside. He has taken the responsibility of the number nine and he's taken it with aplomb. He'll get that match ball and Newcastle United get rich praise and applause from the home supporters here who flocked back in their droves today. They have witnessed a thoroughly comprehensive win. We've seen 6 nils from the likes of Chelsea and Arsenal, but who'd have thought we'd have seen a 6 nil from Newcastle? That's how it's finished. Villa beaten and beaten well. Newcastle United 6, Aston Villa nil. Andy, it was always going to be a big day for you, uh, wearing the, the number nine for the first time at St James's, but I don't think even in your wildest dreams you could have imagined that, could you? No, uh, it's a great game, um, great performance by all the lads, and obviously getting a hat rigger first game of the season at home. It's just fantastic, really. I mean, people talk about your aerial ability, but uh, there was a bit of everything with that hat trick, wasn't there? There was uh, a couple of left footed strikes and uh, a bit of everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was no headers in it, it was all left footed, and uh, really it was just the the quality of the balls that were in the box for us to um, to score the goals, really. I mean, we lost on the opening day, so how important was it to get uh, into winning ways at St James's? Yeah, obviously, this is last season where we didn't lose yet, and before the game, that's what we were talking about. And uh, we just went out there like we did last season and proved the point to all the fans and the people that are down there. Franco Baldini was in the stands there. Is that something that plays on your mind when you, you're going out on the pitch? Not really, I don't. I just uh, concentrate on myself and, and I know I can play football and, and score the goals like I did and that's what I go out there to do. Nonetheless, you've not done your, your reputation any harm there today. It was on the television and with him in the stands too. Yeah, obviously it's great for people to see what, what I can do and stuff, but uh, I'm just happy with three points and, and all the lads playing like I did. Well, Chris, after that opening day defeat, it was important to get some points on the board, and we did that in some style, didn't we? We did in some style, and um, I'm, I'm pro probably more delighted with the, the second half performance because I think at 3 0, it's quite easy to, to sharp shop and to settle for what you've got, but we, we were adamant that we were going to go and go for it and get that fourth and, uh, goal that was, that was going to really um, win us the game and no comeback for them and we're able to do that and then to get the, the fifth and sixth is, is a real bonus but one thing that really did stand out throughout the game is the tempo of that game Aston Villa is such a quick side but we, we more than matched them in that department didn't we yeah well yeah I think there, there are pivotal moments in the game I thought the, the early part of the game was fairly even um, Young was causing us a few problems uh, running off the, the the middle and running off our, our, our central defenders um, and, that, and they showed the quality they've got and of course the penalty miss um, benefited us of course more than them and we were the ones that were able to up our game from then on and uh, I think you look for these pivotal moments Joey's goal I think that was it gave us a little bit more belief once he got the goal and then we were able to go on and, and of course um, churn out the display that we did you mentioned the penalty there but how much of a difference do things like that make uh, to a game well, one thing I'm, I'm very confident of is, is that I think even if they had scored I, I had a feeling today that the the lads wanted to do well here and were very much up for you know a high tempo game um, so I think how we are at the moment and on the back of a uh, a performance I, f I thought at Old Trafford I certainly had the impression that we wouldn't buckle under that but but it's goals that, that change games and um, fortunately we were able to get a few today 
And there were so many good performances today, it's hard to single anybody out. But Andy Carroll, uh, a hat-trick, wearing the number nine shirt, he was fantastic, wasn't he? Uh, well, he didn't get the headlines because of the, the position and because of the goals. Um, but it was a, a tremendous uh, team performance right through with the fact that I'm, I'm quite sure that you will have a goalkeeper and a back four that will be a, a, even more pleased with a, with a clean sheet than, than the fact that we, we managed to score six six goals. But it is goals that, that, that get the headlines and, 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 I, and I think he's had two very good contributions in the last two games, Andy. Um, of course, at Old Trafford. And I, and I was probably as delighted with his performance at Old Trafford as I was today. And Franco Baldini was in the stand there. He won't have done himself any harm in, in terms of the England reckoning, will he? Uh, won't have done himself uh, any harm. He is, he is a handful. Um, but it's something that, that we've continually said here. Um, and it's fact that he is still developing his game. You know, for, for as good as what he's been today, he'll have days where, where he'll be disappointing. But that, that comes with development. But certainly no better place for him to do that than, than in this division.